Uh, greetings to you. I return uh, once more to gold and for a particular reason. Uh, I am going to say a few things now that I haven't said before uh, and quite deliberately. I've always said that gold is a long term strategic store of wealth, store of value, and I haven't changed my mind on that one bit. But I'm attaching a clip uh, by a chap called Andrew McKenzie, who's generally acknowledged to be one of the leading global experts on gold. Uh, and it's quite a long clip, and I don't expect most people have time to go all the way through it. And certainly to some people, it will sound like he's speaking in Mandarin. Uh, it's, it's highly complex uh, and, and complicated, uh, and it's really for the technician. But don't worry about that. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the points that he makes are actually quite straightforward and quite easy. And I made them in my book, both first and second edition, some time ago. Nothing new on the block here. Uh, but he actually, for those interested, I do recommend the clip because he really does know his stuff. And if you like to drill down that far. However, let me just translate, if I may, from the Mandarin. Uh, what he's actually been saying, and I've been saying for some years, uh, that when Nixon closed the gold window uh, back in 1971 and made the dollar uh, a reserve currency, um, it meant the dollar bill. It was the petrodollar, the dollar bill. But intrinsically worthless, it's just a piece of paper. You can't change it for gold like you could theoretically before he closed the gold window. And of course, uh, that was changing anyway, which is why he had to do it. He needed to take the dollar off the gold standard so he could print dollars to pay for the war in Vietnam. And whenever a state anywhere in the world comes off the gold standard, it's to pay for war. You can go back to the Middle Ages. Uh, it's to pay for warfare uh, so that you can degrade the currency. And that's the reason for it. Leaving that aside, uh, this is what's happened now. He did that in 1971, and it was allowed, uh, or it was allowed in America, and it was allowed by the Fed to actually have what they call paper gold. Uh, you could call it exchange traded fund. It's it basically it's a piece of paper. It's a promissory note from a counterparty risk, i.e., a bank or a bullion dealer, that they have gold, and you don't need a piece of uh, gold rock, and you don't need a coin, and so on and so forth. All you need is a piece of paper, which is a promissory note, which of course. Uh, is a recipe for disaster, as I said in my book uh, my, uh, some years ago. There are, nobody knows how many pieces of paper, sometimes they're called derivatives, uh, 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 so on and so forth, and hedge funds like them, and they trade them, and they trade them on a monthly basis uh, in Wall Street and London and so on and so forth. Now, there are anything, certainly no less than 100 pieces of paper for every piece of gold. Uh, and in my book, I suggested 500. So you might argue that it's somewhere between 100 and 500. Now, this was changed uh, quite recently uh, by the Bank of International Settlements, a very powerful organisation which actually regulates banks globally, that no longer could banks hold pieces of paper with a counterparty risk uh, as a tier one uh, reserve. They're no longer allowed to do that. So they have to have gold in specie. This is a whole new game. And although the dollar has fallen in value to six cents against the dollar since 1971, and Nixon closed the gold window, there'd been a massive collapse in the dollar as per valued in gold. But it's still been suppressed uh, insofar as the gold price has been suppressed. And it's been suppressed quite heavily by chicanery on Wall Street and, of course, in London. You all remember back in 1997 when uh, Gordon Brown sold uh, the British British gold. He sold the gold. Um, and a lot of people think he was just an idiot. Well, he is an idiot. But, I mean, he actually did that to save the bullion banks, which were short gold, to save them. Uh, and he had a member of his family, in point of fact, in the gold bullion trade. <laughs> Make of that what you will. So the whole thing's disingenuous, it's crooked, and it has been for years. And we're talking 50 years. So the price of gold against the dollar has been suppressed artificially for 50 years with fake counterparty risk pieces of paper. Those days are ending on January the 1st. And so 
the banks, the central banks and the Chinese and the Russian central banks have already been doing this for some time to get away from a weaponized dollar. They've been trying to get away from this and they've been successful in this. So the gold price now will be set in Peking and Moscow or Beijing, as they call it now. Uh, so this is going to be the situation. And there's going to have to be a scramble for gold in specie in the short term. Now, as I say, I never say this. I don't like saying it. But I would argue that this is going to mean that gold has to find a new trading range in between now and probably March of next year. And I don't think gold is going to be as cheap as this for the next six months. And it may be never as cheap as this again in terms of fiat currency, because fiat currencies are being degraded. I leave you with that thought. Look at the whole clip if you wish, but you'll find in, in a nutshell, it's what I've said, only it's in Mandarin. And I give you that to think about it. And you can look at my website. I'm not pushing anybody. I'm not saying buy now while stocks last or anything ghastly like that. But there is coming a window, I suspect, of opportunity. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I leave you with the thought. Uh, as most of you know, my work is very heavily independently research based. Uh, and I get my information from all over the world. It would help if you press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, because the more subscribers I have, uh, the more likely it is that international uh, independent research institutes will share their material with me. It's most helpful, and then, of course, I'll automatically share it with you. Uh, so, surprise, won't cost you anything. Uh, thank you very much.